Oh, anytime I'm ready. Well, how about now? All right. Okay. Tell me everything you know about Kandinsky. Kandinsky. Well, Kandinsky, in my mind, is the father of abstract art. And the reason he's the father of it is, is he put a lot of time into discussing it, writing about it, writing about other art movements, understanding other art movements, understanding that art is an expression of the soul, and whether it comes through as a painting of a person or a geometric configuration that looks interesting, it's an expression of the soul. It's something that is part of the culture, has always been part of the culture, and this is not publicly, you know, uh, made known in the schools like, oh, you're making an expression of your soul. They don't say that in school. <laughs> um, but that's where I found him, was in school. I found him in books. I found him to have written, you know, these things. And he was part of groups with other major artists of his time. And it was a very interesting time in history. And it was before... The wars broke out, actually. Um, at any rate, what, what it always struck home with me that this has a value. Even though it's abstract, it doesn't mean, well, it's just throwing some squares around and painting pretty colors in them. Yeah, you could describe it that way. But if you could also describe it as, well, the balance of these two squares in relationship to the other color field behind them is quite interesting. Now that is a better description because as an artist, you look at art from a viewpoint of composition, or at least I do, you know. I mean, uh, granted, there may be artists who are not trained in composition, but you learn that in school through drawing, through observation, dimensional, spatial relationships that, that make up a composition and what makes a good composition and what makes a bad composition are interesting questions that, you know, you get to explore in art school, hopefully. So the, the, these things come together for the artist in that he's putting down something that means something to him even if it's, you know, two lines in a circle with interconnected dots. To him, that's, that's saying, you know, that Paris is lovely when you see the stars above the river with the light shining just at a particular angle from the moon. That's an artistic description. And, and so uh, words perhaps define descriptive things best, but what I've found is that our, our culture has the intellectualism of the art that is today is can be found, but boy, do you have to look for it. It's not like uh, the art movements of old. Um, and so at any rate, there's a lot to be said of Kandinsky because you don't see that type of culture in our culture to the degree that it was an intellectual activity that was admired by other intellectuals. Uh, and it's not that I want to make art to be admired by other intellectuals, but, you know, everybody's got their own intellectual level, and whether it's high, low, medium, or whatever, and they have a sensibility of art, they have a, their own sensibility of what their sense of beauty is, you know? It's like, well, do I buy a red car or a blue one or a gray one? That's their sensibility. So, in a nutshell, I guess this is what I'm trying to say, is that you, you see that, you know, art is viewed and taken in by those who view it, and what happens in those moments is your glory, essentially. It's not the glory of being the, uh, you know, the greatest artist in the world. That's, that's ego, you know, and that's, that's celebrity, and that's, that's fine, and boy, does it have a place in our culture, but the basics of art are not about celebrity. 
they're, they're about art. They're about, is it pretty? Do you like it? Does it make you feel sick to your stomach? You know, those are all different levels of aesthetics. And um, it's just interesting because until you really study aesthetics and painting and fine art and that sort of a thing, why you become more aware of it as an artist. And I guess it's, it's my hope that through my work, I can give that feeling or that instant or those two minutes or however long somebody may look at my art and they, they'll get something. They go, oh, that's interesting. You know, that may be all it is, but there's my mark right there, you know. Um, and um, so in, uh, again, it was through art history and through what I found in Kandinsky and the extensiveness to which the, intellectu the, the intellectualism was so prevalent at that point in time, whereas now our intellectualism is, oh, what's on TV? Or what does the news say? And if, you know, it, it's, it's gotten beyond books and reading and publications on some levels. I mean, you know, you could take a, a poll and see <laughs> how many people actually read books, you know, how many people still read things that are published that are uh, of the intellect, not of the five minutes it's going to take for me to sell you my bar of soap. Or the 114 characters in a tweet. Exactly, yes. Because it's like, you know, it's, it's like getting on the news broadcast and, and broadcasting Chinese symbols. Well, that's all fine and interesting, but the amount of time it would take to actually interpret that so that people could understand it is is phenomenal you have to learn Chinese don't you so it, it's all and yet you can make a painting of a Chinese symbol you know the Chinese symbol of good luck or, or whatever the it means and, and it could be beautiful and you don't even know it means good luck but it's going wow I like that and that's all it is you know so I guess what I'm trying to say is there's such a level there's so many levels at which you can analyze anything, whether it's politics or industry or human relationships. You know, uh, uh, the analytical capacities of man are great, and, and uh, I see that they're greatly being ignored, uh, at least from what you get from quote-unquote pop culture, whatever you <laughs> determine that to be. <laughs> That's still up in the air. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it, you know, from what, from what I know in my lifetime. Let me ask you, okay, since you mentioned something about um, you've had to do your own research, do you remember the exact moment you came stumbled across Kadinsky? And, and, and that process and the rabbit hole. Per se. Yeah, I, I, it was, it was art history. Uh, you know, they, they are all art history classes, or, or at least they used to have slideshows. I don't know how they do it now, but I saw, I saw one of his works, and you know, it was triangles and swirls and really nice soft colors, and it was like, wow, I love that. And so from that point, it was kind of like you know, there's something I want to learn more about because it's, uh, I found it really pleasing to look at, um, as, you know, as opposed to, it could have been like Monet's water lilies or whatever. Um, but, and so that was the point where I, you know, and then I went to the library and I got out the, the books and said, you know, Kandinsky and started reading about the guy and reading about where he came from. He was actually a lawyer in Russia before he moved to Germany, which is where he, uh, you know, became prominent as an artist. And he was a member of a group called the Blue Writers Group. And there's actually, you can still find a publication in libraries of the Blue Writers Group. There were Franz Marx and a couple of other artists and and then he was good friends with uh, uh, 
uh, Paul Clay also. Um, and so I learned that, and then I learned he, you know, he became a teacher. He was uh, in the famous Bauhaus School of Germany, which was very influential. Um, and the interesting thing to me about it was this was all pre-war. You know, once the, the democratic socialists came into power, why everything had to be controlled and, and fucked up. But <laughs> that's another story. I don't want to get into politics. But the point was, was that this was an entry point to a whole universe for me of what happened, you know, in the, the first part of last century, which, God, it makes me sound old. But I'm not that old. <laughs> <Not yet>. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, here, let's, let's, let's take it this way. Um, when it comes to abstract, people think different things. Now, I know that it's pretty much taken, uh, let's say, over the past 200 years, that it's taken different meanings mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. What, how does this pertain to you? Kandinsky and let's say another another artist within the past 150 years well it's changed a lot and it's gone through a lot of, of things like uh, I don't know probably the greatest thing that happened with abstract art was the movement in the United States which was abstract expressionism expressionism one of those isms. Anyway, that was a huge, huge movement, and it it really came about because uh, the abstract movement was was so heavily suppressed in Europe. You know, you you didn't do shit like that in occupied Germany or any of those countries with with uh, fascist regimes. Um, but as it, it, it's still, you know, it's it's a loose term. I mean. You can make an abstract picture of reality, right? Like, you can scribble out something that looks sort of like a dog, you know? And, and, and so that's, that's an abstraction of a dog. Whereas uh, my point of abstraction gets a little... It's, it's being an idea is, is something that doesn't have to represent necessarily a dog or a cat or a beautiful sunset, although it can, and sometimes I see that in some of my work, but um, that's, that's what I like, because, I mean, what I like is that I will make a painting, and then I can see things in it, and I'll talk to somebody else, and they say, well, you know what, this reminds me of this, you know, and I go, oh, wow, you know, whereas I didn't see that at all, but that's kind of like the, the fun of abstraction is that it may be one specific thing that the artist has that he's intending, but somebody else will see something else because it is abstract. It's not concrete. It's not, you know, all of the things that we're, we deal with in life that are real and, and physical. And so that, to me, is also another has always been rather a, a big uh, attraction to it, if you will, because society is so consumed with itself, with its things, with, uh, you know, and... This should be this, this should be that. Um, mm -hmm. We prefer the simpler, not the more complex. Don't make me think. Yeah. Don't make me feel. Yeah. Uh -huh. you, you could probably nudge my heart, but... You know, don't make me weep. <laughs> That's a little too far for people. Yeah, yeah. Especially in a, uh, not so much an ADD culture, you know, maybe short-term, you know, enjoyment, you know, move on to the next thing. Yeah. Yeah, which is, you know, the, the or I, I saw something on Facebook, but it was, it really struck home. It's, it's, it's the point that there are ideas, our, our, our ideas, all of our ideas, they're not something that have physicality until we put them there, you know? If, if I, uh, you know, decide that I'm going to write something about my walk, walking the dog, 
well, that's fine. That's an idea. But until I write that thing about walking the dog, it doesn't exist in the physical universe. So it, it, that's the other thing is, is art does strike this sort of mysticism, you know, which is, which in itself is, is not necessarily understood unless, you know, you do, which is great. <laughs> but it, it's kind of like music. Music makes you feel good. Well, is that feeling good? Is that part of like, you know, uh, your your house or your body or the clothes you have on? No, it's a feeling. It's uplifting. It's, you know, uh, it's something you experience that is not, you know, driving your car on the freeway to work in the morning. All right, let me ask you. I'm going to throw out a couple of things here. Um, All right. Honesty. Does honesty have a place within abstract expressionism? Good question. Um, <laughs> it, oh, yes. To to the the artist, uh, at least I believe so because I believe an artist is true to himself. He's true to the skills that he has acquired. And in making his art, he uses his skills. So it's, it's kind of like, you know, you could do kind of a half-assed job of something, you know. Well, uh, an artist knows when he's doing a half-assed job of something because he's going, oh, that's just bleh, you know. And, and, but he also, at the same time, he may claim that's his masterpiece. His bleh is, is a masterpiece. And there's been weird things. Uh, but to me, honesty comes in uh, because you have to be honest with yourself as an artist. Otherwise, you don't really know what the fuck you're doing. And until you know yourself well enough, then you can do something that is, like, you know, uh, meaningful. Because I, I, you hear this in other veins, you have to find your voice, you you know, you have to find your yourself with it, you know. And the only way you can do that is, of course, by doing it, you know. It's like you can, you can draw pictures of dogs all you want to, but the moment you take it to the next level, you're being honest. I'll go with that. <laughs> it, 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 it's got something to do, I think, with professionalism in a way, which is... Which is difficult to put out because professionalism doesn't come through as an artistic thing. It comes through as a business thing, as a cultural uh, point. Okay, you just mentioned uh, professionalism. Okay, I didn't bring it up. You did. <laughs> okay, let me throw another term out there. Okay. Responsibility. Okay. Um, well, that's a hard one to grasp sometimes because I, I, or at least for me as an artist, I look at what I've made and then you have to look at what you want to make. And to me, that's where all of a sudden you're being responsible if you're really looking at it. Because I do, I, I look at the things that I've made and I go, well, this is kind of that way and this one's that way and this one's a little less something. You know, and you sort of analyze it all, and you go, okay, well, what's, what's next, you know? And I'm sure musicians do this, songwriters do this, uh, actors do it, it because it's, it's, uh, it's a process, I think, you know? It's, it's your own growing uh, into what you are doing, uh, which somehow has something to do with responsibility. <laughs> no, 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 that's true. I mean, because it's... In my case, I mean, I, I could stick with one thing and just milk it, you know, for ages, or I could give in to that, I'd say, spirit of it all, and 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 follow it, you know, to what it desires. I mean, you know, the responsibility lies, who, are you intrinsically responsible to that spirit, to the sake of the art, to the sake of the voice, to the generations of artists, abstracts? Um, how do you feel about that? Mm. Um, well, I think <coughs> there's lots of ways to interpret that. For me, I, if, if, okay, here's just an example. If I'm being responsible 
for like abstract, the abstract, great abstractions in the past, you know, like take Rothko, you know, I could make Rothko paintings. I, it's something I could do. I could make de Borken paintings. That's something I could do. But that's, I'm not, in other words, from my viewpoint, I don't know, I, it's different than, say, music, I think, because music is, is, is different. Um, but no, it's, a diff it's, it's the same but different. It's the same but different. But at the same time, if somebody came to me and said, well, uh, I really want this de Borken for my living room. Could you make me one, you know? 10,000 bucks, I go, okay. <laughs> so, you know... It, it, you want that now or do you want that to go? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Exactly. So it's kind of like... Uh, it's funny because... To me, it's funny because as, as, as an artist, that's what you learn. You learn to copy, right? If, if you're drawing the... Mimic. You mimic. If you're drawing the nude is sitting on the pedestal in the corner... You're trying to copy her. Okay, wouldn't that be uh, interpretation? Well, it is to a degree, but before you can interpret, you have to learn how to copy. At least that's how I feel about it. Is be that where you were taught? To some degree, yes. Because it's... Uh, well, in, in any art school, you, you do figure drawing. Yeah, figure drawing. And, and it's like... I wasn't really interested in it because it's like, well, how many interesting ways can you make the human body interesting? And, and I wasn't that interested in it. But it gives you the skill of looking at one thing and transferring it to another space, which is a valuable skill. Uh, and I, in fact, I, or this was a couple of years ago, I, I took a drawing class just for the hell of it, and it was like, I was amazed at how much I learned, and it was mostly about composition, um, because, well, it was still life drawing, right, and so you'd set your jar and your apple on a little thing, and go, well, is that where I want the jar and apple? First, I'd have to figure out the composition as it sat. I don't even go up there, it would take me a couple of hours, man. <laughs> I'm like, no, the light's not right. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So, but, um, so, it, it, again, it's like you're, you, to be, see, I would love to, it's it sort of, okay, you're talking about responsibility in the past and, and the, the artist. Past, present, and future. Yeah, yes, okay. That's, I mean, no, no, that, that was fine. I mean, you know, you... You do brush up, you go back, hey, I didn't see this before, notice this way before. I mean, it's done in music. Mm -hmm. you know, we go back to learn how to do this, and oh, yeah, I forgot about that, um, about that style or that uh, uh, certain musical um, phrasing and something like that. And so it just opens up another arena on, on many occasions. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, it does, and that's why... I don't know. It, it's 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 just part of the journey because if if you're not willing to to try something out, you know, if you've always painted in acrylics and you've never tried oils, you're missing something. You know, if you always played classical and you never strummed a rock lick in your life, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you're missing anything. <laughs> I mean, the fact that you can play in a you know, show pan left and right through your nightmares, you know, and not be able to play Hendrix. I don't think that's a major <laughs> <laughs> falling point for somebody. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. I mean, but the, the sense is there, the appreciation is totally understandable. And, 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 and all right, let me throw one more phrase out at you. Okay. Um, um, this part might need to be edited. <laughs> okay. I had it in mind right when we started. Oh. Um, I'm going to throw another phrase at you, and you tell me what it has to do with abstract or anything you feel. Okay. Let's say inspiration. Inspiration is... Uh... Is it a credible, needed, unneeded... 
idyllic, false thing that exists? No, it's a very real, idyllic thing that exists. I think, I think the 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 falsity, for me anyway, comes through the word ideal. You go. The ideal inspiration, my God, what is that? Has God touched me and, and told me something? You know, uh, but... Uh, you! You! <laughs> you! <laughs> but it, it, but it, it's still, it's like, you know, it's so many different things to so many different people. And for me, it's... Uh, I think the inspiration is is, is that... Really, I've been inspired, and all I'm doing is, through making more work, is continuing my inspiration. And I also get inspired uh, by others' work, you know. I, I look at others' art, and I, you know, go, wow, that's interesting how they do that, you know. Or I, I could never paint that way, or whatever. But the point is, you're... Uh, Okay, here, it, so the, the difference, I think what we're, or what I'm getting to, is there's stimulation and there's inspiration, I think. They're similar things, right? I mean, I could be... St- One requires the other, I reckon, on many occasions. Yeah, yeah. And um, inspiration stimulates, stimulation inspires. There you, you know, go. And, and in, in that arena, not physically, internally, spiritually, mentally, creatively... I concur with that. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah, because lots of times, like, I'll do a painting, and I don't think too much of it, you know? But but it's the other painting that I make that I go, God, this is great. That's the one that inspires me to do more. Of course, the one that wasn't so great does inspire me is because I go, oh, well, that's mediocre. To me, it's mediocre, you know, uh, which is, I don't know, you know... It's such a personal thing because somebody may like my mediocre work more than the one that I go, wow, I love this thing. So, again, it's it's very personal, I think. Yeah, to where it actually made you, um, in another sense, pay off you know, all this artistic um, follow Yes, because it, it brings to mind, there was one point in my life, um, I was working, I think I was, uh, I'd been working in the janitorial business, selling janitorial services, <clears throat> you know, and I'd been out of school a couple of years, and but, and I knew, you know, I knew I had all the, the stuff I called art, and so I, I just, I went out, I bought a little you know, canvas one day and got my acrylics out because I hadn't painted really in, in a couple of years or so. And, and I just doodled something and I go, I still have it. Because I didn't, I didn't even know, well, I didn't think I had it to tell you the truth because you get into operating in the worker day world, none of that shit matters. It's, you're, you're trying to get enough money to buy your bicycle or whatever the fuck you're trying to get enough money for. Um. <laughs> no, I totally understand, man. Don't worry about it. So, to me, that was... That was like self-inspiration because I was showing myself what I had found that I loved, right? Which was making some little um, painting thing, you know, with bright colors and cool shapes that looked like God knows what. But I liked it, you know? <laughs> it appeased. It appeased. There you go. It appeased something at the at the moment at that at that juncture. Yeah, and and it was really cool because at that point in time I didn't have a preconceived idea of what I was going to paint, which some most of the time I do have some sort of idea, but that's all another subject. Yeah, that's true. Um, it's kind of like, you know, I guess it's like if you hadn't played the guitar in two years and you Sometimes. pick it up, yeah, <laughs> see, and you go, oh, wow, that sounds pretty fucking good, you know? Yeah, you just never lose it. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's, and, yeah. And, and all that stuff that goes with it. I've done it a couple times, walk away, can't do it. And 
I don't know if it's for the better, for the worse, for whatever reason it is. All right. I okay. Think we're good on this. Cool, man. All right. All right, that was good.